Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Updates from the Lab. I'm Kevin Barry. I believe Eddie is here, and we're going to get started just in just a little bit, so hang tight. Hey. Good morning. Hey. Hey, what's up, Eddie? Yeah, I'm good. Sonny, are you there? What's up, Osmonauts? Oh, Sonny, Sonny's not here yet. I think he's here. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey. I'm here with uh, Dogemos as well. Hello, oh, hello. Nice. Welcome, are Sonny you? and Dogemos. You guys are in Lisbon? Yep. yep. Oh, mm-hmm. living the life. Free game party. <laughs> Can't wait to see everyone here. To be honest, it's it's great, and um, the organizers. It seems like they put a lot of work into trying to put this together. So, um, oh, it could be like a major milestone in Cosmos. Um, I think like the last time we had anything close to like all the Cosmos people in the same place was probably like 2019, and obviously 2019 was a very different vibe for Cosmos than what it is now. And yeah, yeah. So, really excited about that. That's awesome. Congratulations. I'm envious. I wish I was in Lisbon right now. Um, We have Sean from IXO, the Internet of Impact with us. Welcome, Sean. Hi, everyone. It's really great to be here. Um, Looking forward to joining us. Sean, are, are you also in Lisbon? I'll be arriving on Sunday evening and uh, we'll be around for a good two, three weeks. Excellent. Rad. So much good energy in Lisbon. A portal's yeah, gonna hey, Sean, Sean, is it, do we call it IXO or IXO? What's, how are you pronouncing it? Uh, yeah, that's usually the first question, question people ask me, and it's a good one because you won't forget it. It's, uh, it's IXO. Uh, it's not a neologism. And I mean, it's not, sorry, it's not an acronym. It's a neologism. And um, uh, it stands for whatever you want it to stand for. Um, so it's IXO. All right. Excellent. Are we going to, Eddie, are we going to start with, with osmosis uh, updates or h- how do you want to rock? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, always how and we like it. And, and also Coney Daddy is here today. I mean, I. Yeah. Can we get him up on stage? <laughs> yep. I can do that. Come on up, Coney Daddy. I mean, he's probably hung over from whatever he was doing last night in Lisbon. Uh, I don't know if he's there yet. I don't oh, think he's here. He might be en route. I think he's still still home base okay. right now. Oh, he is, is he, okay. uh, joining us from 35,000 feet up? <laughs> because we just did <laughs> upgrade to the front end from 35,000 feet up yesterday. Did- oh, really? So, okay, yeah, so Tony actually that. deployed that update while he was on the plane, so... <laughs> That's cool. Okay, yeah. so you guys, <laughs> what a, what a life that you're you're updating the uh, the, the uh, inter- front end from uh, space or from the air, I guess. It was crazy because I actually got to try on osmosis swap while I was on a plane using Wallet Connect, and I was like, oh my god, like, <laughs> it's so fascinating. <laughs> that's the future, man. Well, that that's yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we we can talk about. I think we should just talk about osmosis, and when Coney's here, we'll we'll uh, chat with him. Yeah, let's talk about uh, osmosis updates. Josh, Sonny, you want to lead the way? Yeah, so, um, Josh, want to talk about the front end stuff that we have going on with like incentive uh, front end. Stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, one of the kind of big update that we've pushed lately is so. In osmosis, I don't. Uh, this is just to kind of give everyone an overview in case they're not familiar. But not only do we have the ability for you know the basic osmosis uh, osmo incentives to be given out to bonded liquidity providers, but what's also really cool is that kind of like external projects and and you know anyone essentially is able to add other tokens into specific pools for specific bonding durations to kind of incentivize the initial liquidity and things like that so um you know obviously w- one of the things that we've had first was like akash now we have juno ixo uh ngm e-money 
uh, as well as a lot of just other tokens providing their own tokens as liquidity incentives to these uh, liquidity providers. And uh, I think one of the issues that we ran into a lot was we launched Osmosis with the expectation that it's like, all right, like most of these things is just going to be around Osmo incentives. Um, so that would be the, you know, that's how the UI would be designed. So that's how we launched. But now I think we have about like seven or eight different pools that's essentially like being incentivized by external tokens, which is really awesome in terms of growth for Osmosis and things like that. So we basically made a quick update to show the live external incentives that's ongoing so that the discoverability of these pools will increase. Um, in terms of improvements on that side, I think right now it shows the total amount of tokens within a specific gauge. And, and the gauge is essentially like where you set the parameters for how many tokens over how many epochs to how, you know, how many bonding, like how long of a bonding period you'd incentivize. So we showed the token amount, but we're hoping to be able to fix or, or make an improvement where we'd be able to actually show the APRs for each of these things. And um, this kind of goes a little bit further into the Osmosis architecture where we're trying to basically dog food our own data into the front end. Um, so, you know, when we first wait, wait, launched- wait. Mm -hmm. Josh, can you pause for a second? Yeah, what absolutely. Is what, is dog, what does dog fooding mean? Yeah, it's kind of like where, you know, it's like, when you're building a product, I think the best way to improve a product is when you're a user of that product. So you're building a product that you yourself is using. So th that's kind of what I mean by like dog fooding our product. Okay, yeah, I I think that's that's my main goal in life is just to dog food your product. <laughs> except that I'm not. <laughs> except that I'm not a developer. But yes, okay, continue. That's fine. Yeah, but essentially, you know, and, and what I mean by that is like, you know, um. In terms of like price data and things like that, we've been previously relying on CoinGecko, which, you know, to be honest, they've been really cooperative, very helpful. They were the, one of the first like people to integrate Osmosis as an actual exchange. Um, but you know, ideally, we'd like to use the price points of Osmosis pools as as part of that. And um, you know, in, in terms of like bonding amounts and, and these APIs and things like that. So. Uh, we're working very closely with the um, data team, which um, the Imperator team has been working on as well. And um, yeah, basically trying to figure out, all right, we have external dependencies on some of these data. How can we use our internal data to show the data that you know previously have relied on either centralized entities or external entities for these? So um, that's kind of one of the big changes that we're hoping to make. And um, you know, ideally, once everyone is here in Lisbon, that would make a lot of that work easier because it's a kind of a multi-team, multi-entity project trying to uh, get this fixed uh, and improved. So, um, that's oh, that's one. awesome! Yeah, that so that's important for our Osmonauts and Cosmonauts listening to know that like they're not just you know whatever getting trashed on the streets of Lisbon. Like you, you guys also have some some work to do. Oh, we absolutely have a ton of work to do. And, um, you know, I mean, I know people are very, like, bullish on the metaverse and remote work and things like that, but I'm still, I'm a very boomer <laughs> team leader in some ways in that, like, <laughs> okay, the enough. best way to get the work done is just, like, everyone in the same room with a whiteboard and uh, just, like, talk person to person and try to figure out, you know, uh, how can we make this better? Uh, so... Um, that's that's I, I kind of one of the is... main goals that we're hoping to achieve while we're here in Lisbon, where all of us have been that's working great. remotely, and now we won't be. We'll actually be able to like work together in person. So, yeah, yeah I think there's there's some merit to that, and I'm gonna say to anyone on TikTok, please stand down, uh, just because he said he has a boomer approach. <laughs> uh, just chill. I mean, I think that applies to both, like within internally within the Osmosis awesome team. But I think that's like what also I'm excited about for like Cosmoverse is just getting like all these like Cosmos like core development teams like in one spot and like you know figuring out like okay, how do we like you know make sure we're not like duplicating work and like you know sort of planning on yeah. like okay, how do we you know what's next for the next like year of Cosmos basically and how do we like plan going forward? Yeah, I think that's. That's really smart. I mean, it, it having everyone in the same room. I mean, whatever. I, I come from a background of doing stand-up comedy, and it's like it's different. You know, it, it just 
it's different. Having everyone in the same room, you, you actually can get on the same page in, in a much more organic and immediate way and it, mm-hmm. you get better feedback. It's, it's, and if for collaborating and, and like you said, not making sure you're not, you're not like off overlapping each other's work. I, I, um, mm-hmm. I'm happy to hear that. Um, I guess another thing that happened this week, I don't know if this was this week. I don't know if it happened by last week or not. So did we, did we already go over like the Terra? Like, this, was Terra on last week or was or that new for this week? It was it was imminent. Like, it, ter- yeah. it, we had yeah. Doe on last week, and then I, I think <laughs> right. you guys... Uh, yeah, we should go over the lot for sure. Right. Well, so it happened. Uh, you know, I think, uh, we, you know, uh, Tony Yay. and the team did a lot of work on, like, you know, getting the UX working at the last minute. But, like, you know, you were now, you know, you can bring over UST and Luna. Uh, we have... A bunch of pools for both USD and Luna pairs. Um, there's, I think, incentives were just added to the Osmo USD pool and the USD Luna pool, uh, or maybe it was Osmo Luna pool. I thought which ones. Um, so those are approved by Osmosis Governance, and there's a proposal live on Terra right now to get Luna incentives, and that uh, seems to be overwhelmingly le- yes from when I last saw it. Um, so you know. W- Terra's governance voting period is like two weeks. So within two weeks, we should hopefully be getting Luna incentives as well on osmosis. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of like UX struggles that we've been going through just because like, you know, the Terra system is very different. You know, they they were one of the earliest users of the Cosmos SDK from like back in like 2017. And so just from being such an early user of it, they sort of like, did things a little bit differently than like, you know, most new users of it would be doing when like this things got more standardized. So, you know, just str- dealing with like getting those integrations in, but, you know, we were able to get that. And so now you're able to use Terra. Um, and I guess another thing, which I don't know if it's correlated or not, maybe, maybe it isn't, but, you know, yesterday was probably like Osmosis's biggest metrics wise was probably our biggest day ever where we broke $600 million in TBL and $50 million in daily trading volume. So, nice. I think that's, and it's crazy because that trading volume was more than double our biggest, like uh, second biggest day, which was the day right, right before. So, you know, I think we're on a good trend basically. Um, yeah. Can we, can we touch yeah. on uh, getting UST out of Kepler? And that's a big, big question for everyone currently yeah absolutely yeah how do you do it (laughs) um (laughs) so one of the challenges for i i guess i don't want to get too technical but a lot of the nature of the integration tends to be technical but um in terms of kepler integration uh right now we're using the suggest chain method and this is a way for cosmos sdk chains to basically add themselves into kepler um, and, and use a lot of the kind of, you know, signing functionality, transaction functionalities that uh, Kepler provides uh, without us having to kind of, you know, be the gatekeeper of everything. Um, and, you know, the, the issue with that tends to be that, like, you know, we're a very small team that has a lot of different projects to be working on. And, and this kind of reduces the operational and like maintenance tasks that we need to take care of. And it allows the ecosystem to scale. Now, the issue with Terra was, I think, uh, they have a very specialized like custom logic for how they process transaction fees. So they have logic where um, some of the transaction fee is correlated to the amount of the uh, token that you're transferring, for example. Um, and this is, you know, obviously non-standard Cosmos SDK. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other part where, uh, and, and they have a signing library that's kind of non-Cosmos. So they have Terra.js. Whereas I think for us, we've mostly been supporting the Cosm.js uh, standard. So there's been a lot of kind of quirks and changes in terms of like transaction messages and, and things like that, where it's just like not the typical Cosmos SDK chain that we've been seeing. And, you know, obviously that's kind of like the beauty of app specific chains and, and um, Cosmos is like sovereignty that you get as a blockchain. But um, obviously from the wallet perspective, it does add a lot of like additional work to make things work uh, as well as uh, every other Cosmos chain. So we've been just kind of trying to improve that. And, um, you know, and, and one of the 
drawbacks that we have right now, I think a lot of you guys saw it, is we can't currently support UST transfers, uh, like an internal transfer from a Terra address to another Terra address. So you'd have to use Terra Station. But uh, we kind of like basically prioritize it's like, all right, what's the bare minimum that's needed to support IBC deposits and withdrawals into osmosis? And hopefully you'll be able to kind of make some improvements in the future to uh, kind of iron out some of these quirks that we have right now. Wait, so I'm confused. Uh, Eddie, you were, you were saying, so, so people, what's, what's the challenge that people are having that they're not able to get Terra, a UST out of Kepler? Yeah, we're going or, going from Kepler to Terra Station. Terra I know for, Station. Yeah, for a couple of days that was a big thing. I've seen more success lately, but okay, there's still been a you know it, so, it's a so gas it's, a, issue. it's a, always a gas issue with Luna. Ah, uh, okay. So I guess that and what you're saying, Josh, is that that the fix on that is in process or <clears throat> uh sort of. But I think as an immediate actionable. So so what's working is if you want to transfer. Luna from a Terra address to a different Terra address. Kepler supports mm -hmm. that right now. The part that's having issues right now is the UST transfers from a Terra address uh, to another Terra address. So gotcha. obviously, you know, the best uh, suggestion that we have right now is basically use Terra Station kind of in parallel to Kepler. So if you want to do some type of like internal Terra transaction, you can always kind of fall back to Terra Station. But for anything kind of like osmosis related, uh, you'll see you, and and whatever like basic Luna transactions and things like that, um, you'll be able to uh, still use Kepler for that. And I know the error message says it's like a fee issue, but um, I think it's a little bit more nuanced and complicated than just like, oh, Kepler isn't suggesting the right amount of fees because, um, yeah, like, uh, like so. I just the the last thing I want is basically users trying to like. Um, artificially increase the gas and like transaction costs to see if that would work. Uh, that will not work because this is more of a fundamental difference in how transaction fee is handled by each chain. So, yeah. Okay. So the fix is in process and you can, Luna can be sent back and forth easily from Terra Station. And mm -hmm. It's just USD. USD. It's, it, it will be uh, enabled soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. Carney Daddy, what's up? Oh, shalom. Ahoy. <laughs> shalom. Welcome. Oh, thank you. I just rolled out of bed. I'm going commando in some basketball shorts. We're still nice. just, you know, getting the day started. I'm a little upset. Josh and Sonny said we weren't just supposed to get shit faced in Lisbon the entire time. You guys have to do work. I don't understand the situation. <laughs> <laughs> not... There'll be yeah, plenty of people. We'll, we'll... Yeah. Yeah. You'll be shit faced <laughs> at a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> I awesome love video, it. man. The uh, marketing oh, DAO. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great work with the marketing oh, yeah. DAO video. Oh, th th name. thank you. Thank you. It was super fun. Super fun to make. Ho <laughs> hopefully, I did it all uh, justice. So, yeah, I think it was amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, and that, that, that Ethereum gas station, I think I've been there. It's in Brooklyn, right? <laughs> no, no. That. <laughs> It is in uh, it's in Los Angeles, over on oh, over, on, okay. over on the west side, which I know is confusing because the fishing shot is supposed to look like it's in the evening, but that's movie magic. That's actually six a.m. Nice. <laughs> Sun's on the wrong side. Don't let anybody else know. All right. Yeah, you <laughs> all your secrets. Don't. Worry. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, Ethereum is super expensive in L.A. Kevin, you want to tell us a bit about the marketing gal? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the marketing DAO we should uh, I guess congratulations on, on uh, to the, the DAO members and everyone who helped get that passed I think it's a fantastic uh, proposal and yeah I, I really enjoyed the brainstorming sessions they had and with Tony Daddy actually was there and uh, putting the script together and coming up with you know a targeted audience and how to move forward and uh, with you know the incoming liquidity it's like okay well Terra's incoming we're going to get a lot of new users let's explain how the dex works <laughs> and what it what a liquidity pool is and i love the potluck example by the way that was a good one. Oh yeah that's an excellent analogy yeah the whole idea of a amm i learned writing that script it it goes very deep you could uh, you could easily chat about that for like 30 or 40 minutes uh for sure <laughs> 
And I mean, maybe we should. <laughs> um, so that that's I'm not really awesome. Today. I'm not saying yeah. Today. So it, it's really awesome that we got that branch going and it takes some weight off of Sonny and Josh and the rest of the mm-hmm. team. Um, and it puts yeah, that's, a really, that's a really important point, Eddie, that I think, I don't know. I, you know, we've been, been like working with people that are for, for the, uh, the community support DAO and now the marketing DAO and all that's one thing that I see underneath. If you peel back the curtain on any of these DAOs, part of the purpose is, is to, take the pressure off of the dev team off of sunny off of doge Mos, off of you know, unity and everyone who's like cracking the code uh so they're not distracted by these responsibilities and th- this these kind of necessary yeah. activities that you know of like reaching out to new target market new potential users and making sure that the current ones are 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 being served properly and yeah. To be honest, I just think you guys are like better at this than we are too, in some ways. So it's just like, you know, <laughs> let the people that are good at this like handle it, right? And, um, right. Yeah, that's another just classic kind of human problem solving thing of like some people are better at certain specializations. Like I'm not trying to write code. Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, <laughs> I think that's that it's good to have some division of labor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we are we are going to re- introduce the community support DAO uh, to the chain. Also, yes, it's it is imminent. We've been for the past month we've been banging our heads uh, together and taking all the feedback we've gotten from the community and trying to talk to admins, mods, everybody you know who's intimately involved with community support. Um, so yeah, it is coming very soon. And um, we look forward to talking with everybody about it and uh, seeing it mm-hmm. on chain and hopefully in, in reality. We'll see. Nice. Um, um, so we have one last announcement, which we want to make. For, um, so this just went live. You can go uh, like you know, 25 minutes ago. Uh, so if you go on the defiant.io, um, we... Uh, no, happy to announce that the we actually just finished uh, the Osmosis La- uh, Foundation basically just finished its um, first like strategic round that we did, uh, and so uh, Paradigm is actually uh, led the round, and so you know we did a OTC swap with uh, them and a couple other uh, great investors um, from the strategic uh, strategic reserve. So if you remember from the you know token. Uh, model paper uh, like blog post we talked about how like the purpose of the strategic reserve was to like sort of bring in these like partners um, and so yeah that that uh, just finished uh, well it actually the, 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 it actually happened a couple months ago but uh, we you know we just finalized you know dotted the i's and crossed the t's uh, this week so that's fi- that's finally live and available um, and so yeah you know we're excited to be working with them and working with such a great team uh, there. Um, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, that's Thank awesome. You. And to be honest, I think, you know, the list of, like, people that we've been able to just, like, get into this, like, whole osmosis or strategic reserve was just, like, fantastic. I think, like, you know, some of the, like, biggest giga brains in DeFi uh, are, you know, very bullish about osmosis. A lot of them are, I think, in this for the long term and uh, very kind of eager to help be part of the design and building process as well. So I think uh, that's, that's awesome. Huge, like, uh, excitement building around, you know, now that we're trying to get ready uh, to build kind of the next step in uh, in osmosis, including, you know, super fluid and many other features. Uh, it would be so much, you know, great help to have these amazing people, I think, part of that discussion and, and design process. So uh, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, I think this is Paradigm's like first DEX investment outside of Ethereum. And I think it's their like first AMM after Uniswap. So, you know, we're quite excited to have these guys who help like design the first ever AMM basically help us on like designing the next generation of AMMs. It yeah. sounds like a pretty good advisors and uh, investors to have on board. Yeah, I'd probably listen to them. 
<laughs> I mean, I think that that fits the ethos, ethos of, of the osmosis community is, you know, giga brains welcome, smooth brains as well. Um, small brains, all brains. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's uh, let's shift over to Sean from talk about the Internet of Impact. You want to share a bit about Ixo? Ixo. Ixo. Yeah. Thanks very much. So yeah, we've been building out this idea for a, num- a number of years now, and um, launched our first version of the Cosmos chain in 2018 um, at a really bad time. Um, but, um, Oh yeah, that was a rough have, year. Yeah. Um, actually I see Tim, 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 who was on my team back then is, is on the call, um, in Berlin. Oh, so nice. glad to see you here. Um, so <clears throat> the idea, <clears throat> excuse me, was, uh, was to tap into the capabilities of an internet of blockchains, um, to really bring the capabilities that are required to manage data, um, essentially state, um, representations that uh, give us verified state representations of what's going on in the state of the real world and bring that into financing and coordination mechanisms on chain. Um, and so to do that in a way that scales as well as becomes accepted by um, important market players, whether those are governments or humanitarian organizations or large um, uh, corporates or, and, and so on who are who are investing in or interested in and implementing sustainable or regenerative um, activities, sovereignty is a really big uh, issue. Um, and so right since the, the, the genesis of the, the idea of the internet of blockchains, that was very appealing. And I'm confident we made the right decision in that. And we're able to then say, right, well, if we've got this internet of blockchains, you know, wh- what is the purpose? Um, what is a kind of bigger purpose? And my background is in sustainable development and global health. And it just seemed obvious to me that we should be purposing this towards um, sustainability and ecological regeneration. And of course, we have some great projects, including Regen Network and the work that that ICSO does, as well as a lot of values alignment within the Cosmos ecosystem and uh, um, the leadership uh, that uh, Ethan provides um, at an Inchain Foundation level with the team there. Um, and so we took this one step further and said, well, let's um, explicitly in a programmatic, systematic way, uh, make this an explicit objective of what Interchain does, what the Cosmos ecosystem does. And let's define a program, which we, we announced a couple of months ago um, within the Interchain Foundation, which is the Earth program. We could have called it the sustainability program, but sustainability is a bit of a a kind of um, misunderstood word. You know, we're talking about the sustainability of the networks or the sustainability of the planet. So we think Earth program and the Earth mission that that supports, you know, is a really big idea. And yeah, I think that's relatable. Best... That's relatable for most of us. Cool. I mean, Earth being my, home, I mean, home planet. <clears throat> yeah, one of one of the one of the sort of images that triggered this all for me was um, a couple of months ago. Whilst I was. Um, Working with with Sam at, at Inchain Foundation on the branding and um, and uh, imagery we wanted to use, I saw this image that had been posted by NASA um, showing a, a fly past the dark side of the moon. The moon, and you know, we wrote all the songs about dark side of the moon and so on. But I think it was the first time um, a satellite had traversed the dark side and had taken this amazing photo from the dark side perspective onto Earth, and it was incredibly striking how with that perspective of almost kind of standing on the moon, um, planet Earth really looks so fragile and feels like home. Uh, you can see the lights, you can, you can, uh, you know, can imagine, you can zoom into where you are um, and place that within the context of the, you know, the great vision of cosmos and all the interplanetary stuff. But right at this time, we need to be looking back and saying, okay, what can we do to focus down here on Earth and, um, and change the state? Nice. I love it, Sean. You guys are partnered with Regen to do things? Yes, yes. So anything um, in particular? So, um, so we've done we've done a few things with, with Regen. We go back a long way in terms of our relationship, um, deciding to build on on uh, on Cosmos um, and um, uh, uh, pulling in Rick and, and and others to advise us on on that. Um, we did a token swap. 
um, earlier this year, uh, which turned out to be really more than token in terms of its value, as Regen did really well through their LBP and, and are currently, as you know, um, well established. Um, and so, so we 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 um, really want to do signal our uh, partnership and that we have a, a vested interest in the success of each other's networks. Um, on a practical level, in terms of developing protocols and software, um, we have strong contribution and participation by the, the Regen team. And we obviously contribute back into the work that the, um, the core developers do on the SDK. Um, so we've had a, a few development projects that we, we've been involved in, including around um, the standards for interchain identifiers, which is a piece of work we started about a year back um, with um, really instigated by, by Billy and funded by the Interchain Foundation. And we're now, I think, ready to, to see that implemented and uh, we've made that one of the upcoming hackathon um, challenges, um, which uh, falls under a prize category, which we created called the Earth Prize, no surprise. Um, and um, one of the challenges there is Earth tokens. So how do we um, use the concept of uh, tokens that are not just coins or not just ERC721 type um, NFTs, but rather look at a much more pluralistic um, view of tokens that have all different types of property sets and behaviors that are template driven and that uh, address specific use case requirements. And so that's the basis um, for, for the interchain identifier and token specification. Um, and of course, then having interoperability cross chain um, and, and into the web actually, because it's all based on decentralized identifiers and um, uh, the tooling that's been developed out around that um, through W3C. Wow, this is a lot. I'm, I'm, d I'm looking into your white paper, and I, I just I just want to say that I, I do I really love the idea of trying to verify and and measure the impact on social, environmental, economic problems. It's it's always one of those things where if you try to talk about these kinds of uh, efforts, <clears throat> this kind of objective that in the past we've kind of you end up in sort of a weird fuzzy realm where you're like yeah biodiversity is important god knows how we would actually measure that or know if we're you know if it's getting better or worse i mean we just there's so trying to find ways to reward people for doing you know things that are actually helpful um i think is it's noble and it's it's awesome that this kind of project is blossoming on uh, cosmos in the cosmos ecosystem and you can get it on osmosis yeah so at a funda fundamental level um this is really about taking information and with we, we we have a lens on it on that information um that is related to sus sustainability and ecological regeneration but really all information increases in value through opinionation processes even um instagram uh, likes um and so if we have wait, a, wait, wait, Sean, what was you used a word there that I've never heard before. You said opinionation. Yes. So um, so if you take a piece of information, a photograph, a claim um, and apply opinionation to that. So you like it, you star it, you um, you assess it as being true or false. Awesome. Um, and if there's some trust in that process, you're elevating the value of that information. Yeah. in the first instance. And then secondly, if you put it into a, a stateful um, graph, you're able to then build other states on top of that, whether that's through financing mechanisms, coordination, et cetera, et cetera. And so, so that, you know, this is the fundamental technological breakthrough that, that I believe we, we, we have with uh, blockchains is the ability to create these graphs um, that are both uh, semantically linked if we implement those graphs um, using the kind of verifiable credentials, data models that use linked data, as well as um, sequentially um, di uh, directed acyclic graphs uh, that enable us to establish state and assess the state changes over time, and then create incentives for achieving future states or providing um, back propagation of kind of rewards to those who have uh, created those those outcome states that we want to see, um, and that's very generic. You know, it can be 
anything from building your house to you know to educating a child to sequestering tons of carbon dioxide um so you know, part of what wow. we've been working on are, are quite core protocols. So the in-chain identifier protocol is a very, a very base protocol. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the crypto economic primitives that we've developed um, around risk-adjusted bonding curves, which pull information from real-world um, state observations as an alpha signal into the bonding curve um, 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 uh, equation so that you can shift the, the shape of it, it shifts the shape and adjusts the pricing on the, on the AMM. Um, that starts to link uh, blockchain state with real world state. And I've been writing about this as being the sort of basis for sustainable DeFi, where it's a DeFi mechanism or DeFi mechanisms that are built on state where the state represents state of the real world. See, what's to me, what's so exciting about this is that it, it breaks out of this. Th there's like a media narrative about, you know, is blockchain good for the environment, which is like so, so small, I guess, small minded for, for lack of a better term. Like it's a very, very narrow uh, perspective. And then this cracks open that, you know, that problem or that you know, th th this the possibilities and to just a vast array of areas where blockchain can actually help us improve the environment in, in manners that, that the previous technology has proved to be impotent. Correct, yeah. And so now the challenge is, you know, how do we get this into the hands of people who really need the technologies? And so our, our partnership and our announcement with the Opera Browser company is really important. Um, so we should have a, a native Cosmos uh, wallet in the Opera mobile browser within the coming weeks. Um, I was hoping to get it ready with Opera in time for Hackathon. We, we'll see. We'll see if that's going to happen. But that means um, that um, uh, Cosm.js-based web apps can 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 tap into that mobile uh, wallet uh, uh, capability. And hopefully Osmosis gets there as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this is on the roadmap, but um, uh, it would be great to make... You know, osmosis, the the kind of Google interface where you go and search for information. Well, if you've got a mobile app and you want to make a transaction, you you go through the osmosis interface. That would be cool. Yeah. I, I also feel like I just want to say that um, you're covering a lot of really exciting topics here, Sean. But for me, in addition to that, now that I've learned this new word, opinionation, um, I can also ex explain why some of my tweets don't don't get as many likes uh, because it's just an inefficient opinionation process. Um, you know, that's really what it boils down to. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this is. Uh, you want to? Yeah, can I? Yeah. No, go ahead. No, after you. I was just going to say go. we could take questions from. Uh, anybody, if anybody has any questions. Yeah. I know there were a couple people earlier in the in the call. Yeah, please bring it on. If anyone has questions, uh, I, I, we've got some big brains here. So mm -hmm. that was a joke. Sizes does not matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the motion of the neurons. <laughs> It's the motion of the neurons. <laughs> Coney, you got anything else in the works? You're going to do some filming in uh, in Lisbon? Oh, I'm going to bring everything over. Um, I, I shoot everything on like a probably overly large camera. I probably have a really overly produced Twitter account. I don't even like upload anything to YouTube. I'm working on it. All right. It's in progress. Uh, I know me and the marketing Dow definitely want to do some 101 videos just as far as like getting Adam over to osmosis. Uh, so I guess that's more on like the work side of things, but more on the fun side of things. Um, I'm going to bring over my camera. I got two microphones. I got two yellow wires. Um, so I'd love to do some impromptu uh, interviews oh, with some folks in Lisbon. Just for fun. Yeah, yeah. Some like man on the street stuff. 
exactly. I want to just like do more interviews of just like you know two people maybe at like a cafe maybe on the beach just some impromptu stuff two to three minutes yeah, long I like you know. that. um so if anyone would like to you know be my first guest on my show the yellow wire that's the working title if you have any other ideas uh holler at <laughs> me um yeah well, let me know nice that's exciting we got a crypto plumbus what's a plumbus welcome plumbus Hello, yes. Thank you very much um, for, for giving me the, the stage here for a moment. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you so much um, to IXO World, Regen Network, and um, all the wonderful Cosmonauts here. Uh, we'll be in Portugal, and I would be very interested in that Yellow Wire uh, interview you just mentioned, Cone Daddy, so I'll, I'll definitely hit you up about that. Oh, DM me. Slide in. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, but I did just have one question for, for Sean there, um, Dr. Sean Conaway. Um, regarding IXO World and kind of um, your roadmap or game plan to, to integrate um, other platforms and, and like-minded uh, projects into that IXO uh, or world state um, platform. Yeah, great. Um, so so we're, we're going live with a launch pad, um, which is a dog fooding thing. Um, so we'll actually be, be having projects on our um, our web application platform um, that will be uh, candidates to create market platforms themselves. Um, and our first cohort is really amazing. Um, everything from uh, um, uh, uh, edu education, primary education, using educational technologies in India. We've got a live project there with, with a large financial institution to um, investing in wildlife um, conservation in, in, in Africa, uh, youth job uh, jobs uh, creation and, and skills um, with UNICEF Africa, across Africa. So, so firstly, the integrations that are really important to us are the marketplace integration. So we're actually getting these technologies into the hands of people, connecting the sources of capital with the, the people and organizations that are actually implementing projects to make things change. Um, and then the uh, the services that come in and provide evaluations and verifications. And that's a large marketplace. And so um, in, in order to create interoperability within that, um, within that, that sort of platform play, um, one of our biggest um, roadmap priorities is to provide financing and technical support and, um, and a, an easy onboarding mechanism for the providers of this new type of oracle. So I define these oracles as prediction oracles. So they're not only a source of trusted information, but they do predictions about, you know, how likely is this claim to be true and positive, or how likely is this alpha going to um, indicate that the, um, the outcome state is going to be achieved. Um, so to enable those kinds of services to plug in um, and to utilize the uh, the, the data processing, the claims, um, and DeFi mechanisms that we have built into the chain. Um, and that requires integrations with, with legacy systems. Um, and we've got some connectors we've started to build there. But really, we need a big developer community around this. And so one of our, our big next initiatives is to uh, launch the, um, the DAO. Uh, um, I, 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 only two guesses for what the name of the DAO will be. Um, and... Um, uh, and uh, so we have 40% of the total um, uh, supply of XO tokens currently in a community pool, which will transition across into a DAO, um, which will provide sustainable financing for building um, on on this uh, on these networks. And so we're hoping that that will really drive the adoption by other um, uh, uh, communities and bring in other integrations and things. So that, that's the big plan for the coming months. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much um, for, for answering that question. Um, I, again, appreciate the, the thoughtfulness there, um, as well as very excited to see, um, like you kind of mentioned, all the different ways you can lower the barrier to entry and allow many more, you know, sort of like-minded projects and, and organizations to, to be able to, like you said, onboard and, and start uh, working with, you know, the Oracle services and whatnot. So very, very much excited um, and looking forward to, to all the things to come. So thank you. Cool. If you're in uh, if you're in Lisbon on Sunday afternoon, we have an unconference. Um, it's a smaller meeting um, to speak about the the Earth program. Um, so that'll be taking place in the afternoon, directly after Cosmoverse and the big party on Saturday night. Uh, so welcome 
to anyone who would like to participate in that. Wonderful. Um, I will say I will very much be interested in, in uh, joining you there as well. Um, I actually founded a, a local sustainable tea company recently, and we're looking into ways and in how to integrate carbon and ecosystem credits into our own uh, decentralized supply and platform. So very much looking forward to, to chat with y'all some more. Rad. Nice. Cyber Maybe have some tea. Yeah, and wait, wait, I will wait, say I, there will be an airdrop for all uh, Cosmos, Regen, and IXO stakers and holders. So much down the road, nice. but a little little alpha for y'all now. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, hey, I, Sean, I wanted to. You said that there are two names potentially for the the IXO DAO. I I mean, it, no, I was, I was more like there's two guesses what the name oh, could be. Two guesses. <laughs> Okay, two guesses, what, yes. What are the? I mean, well, that, I, well, well, it's well, obviously it's going to be called the Earth Dial. So, ah, um, okay. Um, I thought it was going to so be the Impact Dial. <laughs> I think, I think Earth Dial is no, it's good to yeah. just you know put a stake in that, claim it. Yeah, we've 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 already got some name spacing around that, and so we've got a permanent awesome. link, um, and so on around Earth. So we've kind of claimed Earth, put out, put out our put a flag uh, stake in, in it. the ground there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it, Earth Dial. Uh, CyberSec and crypto. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, sorry about my uh, my English. I, I'm French. Um, no apologies. <laughs> thanks. Um, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. Um, I'm sorry. This has nothing to do with uh, XO, but um, a few friends of mine asked me the same question um, regarding the Juno pools. Um, the bonus bonding rewards, uh, the profitability is uh, kind of hard to read. Um, I was wondering if it was possible to to have uh, some sort of APY or APR displayed, maybe? Yeah, uh, I'm happy to answer this one. So we're working on that right now. Um, and, and yeah, that's one improvement that I think I covered earlier in, uh, during the spaces. But essentially, in terms of the logic, uh, what it is, is so basically, let's say you have 30,000 Juno tokens distributed over 30 epochs, right? Uh, this is just an arbitrary number, not saying this is what the actual rewards are, but basically that's like 1,000 Juno per epoch, right? And you can designate a minimum bonding period. So you can say, hey, I would only like to give rewards to people who have bonded over seven days of unbonding liquidity. Um, and, and you can designate these things like that. But let's say, you know, you chose the one day, right? And when you choose the one day, anyone that bond liquidity for one day, seven day and 14 days, everyone will be able to get, basically receive that uh, bonding reward uh, proportionally to the amount of liquidity that they provide. So you'll have to know the kind of total amount of liquidity that is, uh, that is bonded in the pool and then the amount that you have. And then you'll just have to divide up uh, the per epoch uh, liquidity reward uh, to whatever percentage share that you have of that uh, bonding pool. So, but hopefully you will be able to just show this on the front end. Uh, it's coming. Cool. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Good question. If anyone in the community, while while we go to in the front end, want to build like a nice little spreadsheet or something that yes. can do it, that would be really helpful. <laughs> Yeah, I would use yeah, that, I would in, use the that in the meantime. Oh, I'll take this second to go ahead and plug that uh, after these DAOs are set up, I'm really ambitious about pursuing a grants program to plug in with the DAOs that's scope specific. So if there's yes. like community tooling, we can put that with the community DAO. And if there's like a marketing uh, grant system, we can do with the marketing DAO. So. Yeah, this grants aspect to me is very exciting. It's hard. You know, we've we've been talking about it and researching other platforms and seeing how they're doing grants and and actually getting a lot of features and tooling done. So it, it's hard to kind of combine it all together, like with the pro one you know proposal for the DAOs themselves. But I see it as a really important part, um, kind of a another thing in another web whatever piece in the arsenal uh, of of the uh, sort of organizations that we can form to help build things that we need. Yeah. And reward the community at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Re reward the people who, who uh, 
who helped move the needle. Um, village guy, you got a, you had a question? Maybe. I think he's still connected. Um, yeah. Wi-Fi not as good in the village, probably. It, yeah, it might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old, old village Wi-Fi. Oh, village guy drop. Village yeah. Guy back. Uh, we got Crypto Muse. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. How y'all doing? Hello. Doing well. That's good to hear. Yeah, I'm in How New York. I wish I could be in Portugal. And enjoy uh, I'm also in New York. Out there. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm based out. I'm based out of um, Bushwick in Brooklyn. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um. So I've got two separate questions. One for the Osmosis team and one for the IXO team. Um. Just to be real, real brief. So I heard the mention of the DAO for the um, IXO team. Um. Is that the? How will it, it exactly function? Let's say worst case scenario, the we experience what we experienced in 2018 with the nasty drop downs in pricing. And projects not surviving. How, how does the how will the DAO function to ensure that that will survive? And then That's for a- the os- and then uh, let me just finish the question real quick. Sorry. And then for the Osmosis team, um, plans for experimental DeFi offerings like auto farming, auto compounding, uh, one click L- um, liquidity pool formations. Like, are those things in the works? Wow, All right. Great cool. questions. Cool. So, so I, I had the advantage, the, um, the the great pleasure actually of, of um, working with Trent McConaughey from Ocean Protocol, and um, some of you may know he's kind of been what at the forefront of the, the whole token engineering movement. Um, and the the Ocean DAO has gone through some great iterations and is very successful at the moment. And it's based on what Trent calls the Web three sustainability loop. Um, so, if you're um, uh, essentially emitting uh, tokens for investments of the ecosystem, where you get a net uh, return of um, ROI of one, and you have alignment with the the mission and um, and values of uh, of the, the the ecosystem you're trying to build out, um, that then creates a, a sustainable funding loop. Um, in in our version of it, we're working on directing um, that funding towards these provable outcome states. You know, so you make a claim about what you're wanting to achieve. If you achieve that, you can also, um, you can, you know, you get paid for doing it. Um, and we're, we're designing a, 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 a um, rewards mechanism into that as well, so that we can have a curated set of, uh, of outcome states that get generated. The curation is created through governance. Um, and with, if you achieve any of those outcome states as represented by a claim or, a, or, or a, an NFT, um, with the associated claims that have been verified, then uh, you can participate in the rewards. Um, so we, we are hoping that will direct the growth of um, the ecosystem towards this vision, um, as well as create a sustainable engine for uh, for financing that. Um, yeah, so uh, about the question about like DeFi stuff, um, sort of like peripheral products, um, so yeah, I think two answers. One is that yeah, we our team is actually working on some like cool like peripheral products to the core AMM. So you know we have some things in the works, such as like a new version of the liquidity bootstrapping pools, uh, sort of like more designed for like um, you know initial token distributions and things like that. Um, we also have like things around like, you know, the leverage stuff that uh, Unity and Dave have been working on. Um, but then at the same time, you know, we understand that our team is, you know, we can't do everything. And so, you know, I think a lot of the products that you talk about, like things like yield aggregators or like, you know, auto, you, you know, all, all these like cool things, like, you know, things that I, I, I consider as like peripheral products to uh, the core AMM. Um, you know, there's a couple ways where, you know, one option is where they get started being built out on like chains, uh, connected to osmosis on like new chains. So for example, like Som- Somalier, they are going to eventually add, um, like os- osmosis, uh, liquidity managers essentially. Um, and that's on its own chain. But at the same time, I think there's a good use case for like, um, very like special products that are like very, 
associated with the core product of osmosis to like coexist on the same chain as osmosis. And so this is why, like, you know, I think Cosmosm is like starting to become, you know, it, it, you know, it, it's reaching 1.0 very soon. Um, and once that, like, once it hits 1.0, and we can add a couple of the changes that we want to do, such as getting rid of CW20. Um, once we can do those things, I think we're, we'll be pretty ready to uh, add like sort of a more permissioned Cosmosm to the Osmosis chain. Um, permissioned in that it like. You know, when someone wants to deploy a contract, uh, governance uh, should approve it. Just because we don't want osmosis to turn into this like generalized smart contracting chain right now. But like, if someone built a yield aggregator or something, you know, I think osmosis governance will be, you know, very happy to approve that. And like, you know, we'll have this like ecosystem of um, peripheral products next to uh, on the osmosis chain. So that that's sort of our strategy of how. How how we're go we're planning on going about doing that. So re really leading into this like the Cosmosm ecosystem that's developing. That's a great answer. So and so in theory, Sonny, I mean this is I guess for the uh, for us apes out there that this kind of uh, tooling or, or the permissioned Cosmosm type of projects could be funded by the community pool or, or by or would these just be outside developer? Like, it could be both. It could be um, things that are, you know, um, funded by the community pool, or it could be, you know, projects that, you know, external developers and maybe some of these new like secondary products have their own tokens and things, um, which is great. You know, like having a lot, you know, have, making sure there's like good incentives for other teams to come in and build on top of osmosis is like yeah great and you know whatever ions end up being maybe that will also be built <laughs> using this I, method I was, like, I was waiting for you to say it but i know <laughs> that this is a this is a current a hot topic among uh ionists and whatever ion holders ion. we like the idea of using potentially using some of the clawed back ion to ostensibly fund initiatives just like uh, our friend in bushwick uh asked about you know having uh building a a permissioned cosmosm you know yield aggregator or auto compounding feature or you know a chain i think that that's something that i i just know that that part of the community is very uh they're very game to to try to incentivize and stir that up and drive it I think for, for anyone asking what ions for that that's part of it is that kind of energy yeah that's, that's part of the brainchild we had one more person trying to connect but um i think i think we're good do we have anything else we want to add coney daddy kevin Sean? I have one, well i have one thing sonny josh go ahead oh uh, the thing I, that i would add is so you know we we've um, talked about wanting to, to do uh, another town hall about this community support DAO and th that is still the goal so just I would say for everybody to just keep your um, you know ear to the ground and w w it, there will be an announcement we don't have a set date yet uh, and also for now you can go to commonwealth.im forward slash osmosis and join us in the, the pre-proposal <clears throat> discussion. Add any thoughts that you might have, any um, you know ideas, questions, concerns. We, we want to have as much dialogue as possible this time. And uh, you are welcome there. You do not have to dox yourself. You can just plug in an email. They'll create an email, a, a, a new wallet for you for commenting and uh, join us. Cool. And if I can just uh, plug, we're going live with um, Osmosis Reward Pools for Exo Atom and Exo Osmo. I think it's on Friday. Um, so nice. that includes both the, the Exo external rewards as well as Osmo rewards. And so that'll be a kind of a double bonus. Yeah, those, those have been great. I think I saw 1% daily return yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was a little difficult because people couldn't see the APYs. Um, so it was kind of like uh, kind of private information in a way. But um, I hopefully, yeah, that, 
uh, thanks for the support, but, uh, uh, Sunny and Josh. And um, yeah, uh, but we're looking forward to that becoming better, uh, more visible, and 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 better supported. So far, it's been great. Th- thanks for coming on today, Dr. Conway. You've been a fantastic just, just pre- presenter. Okay, Sean, Dr. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Crypto, someone was calling me the other day. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really fascinated with your project. It's it's huge. I mean, the the, the potential of it. I, I look forward to diving in and learning a lot more. But I'm excited. Yeah, I, I have been comparing it to Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> please, please do come to the to the event. Um, and uh, if you're in Brisbane. It'd be great to jam some ideas there. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah, this has been a good one. Josh, Coney, Daddy, Kevin, Dr. Sean. Yes. Yeah. Th- and thanks for everyone who, who, who chimed in and asked questions. Uh, we, I, I really, um, I felt like today was very solid uh, representation of, of, of the cosmonaut, osmonaut community. So really appreciate you guys, all of you. Uh, you feel okay. See you next week. Yeah, till next week. Have a have a wonderful weekend. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.